with a question asked by the youngest child at eight. Why is this night different than all other nights? That simple question unleashes a flood of memories and stories of the power of God who can save and forgive, who heals us and sets us free. Dear friends, that is how our Jewish brothers and sisters begin these high holy days known as Passover. As I was thinking about that, I thought perhaps maybe that's how we should begin the liturgy tonight. Rather than the procession of the oils and singing the opening hymn and the proclamation of the Gloria, maybe the youngest child here, maybe Casey, should stand up before us and say, why are these nights different than all other days and nights? Then one of the elders of the parish, and wouldn't you like to know who I'll pick out? <laughs> one of the elders of the parish would get up and stand and say, These are the nights where we walk a lot. We wash feet, we venerate a cross, we gather around the fire, and from one candle, Light spreads everywhere. And we are also washed with water and oil, and we renew promises. And we are sent out to bring the good news to others. My friends, that's what we do. And so that's how we begin these sacred days known as the Sacred Kurban. The night before he died, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and said, This is my body. Do this for remembrance of me. At the end of the meal, he took a cup and said, This is the chalice of my blood, the covenant that I have with you. Do this in memory of me. The question I might like to ask this evening, what is the this that Jesus is asking us to do? When Jesus says, do this in memory of me. Many people would say, the this is receiving the body and blood of Jesus that has been poured out, broken, and shared in the form of the bread and wine. My friends, that is an excellent answer. But there's a little more to it than just that. For the this is not only receiving those sacred elements, but it's also our willingness to be poured out, broken, and shared, to be nourishment for others. That's what we are invited to do in memory of Him. But there are other answers to the question. For example, do this in memory of me is what Jesus did that Passover evening. He gathered with his family to celebrate this powerful memory of their faith. They gathered at table. They shared stories. They participated in their faith tradition. So very simply, what we do in these days is the same thing. We do our full and conscious and active participation in these liturgies of our faith tradition. Thank you for being here tonight. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at individuals. It's three and one. What did Jesus and his disciples do that night? He said, we gathered that this night is to be a perpetual feast in memory of what took place in their lives. And the perpetual feast is to 
remember the marvelous deeds of God. Interesting, more often than not, not only for the Israelites and for us, we tend to think about the times God seemed this. But on this time, we are to remember the times that God seemed so close to us. And how God was a part of our story, our history, not just once long ago, but here and now. And so maybe part of the invitation of do this in memory of me is that we are to become the marvelous deeds of God. What a wonderful task. A little aside, one of my favorite verses from the Exodus story is we hear these very profound and systematic words from the angel of how they're supposed to celebrate this. And then there's this little side, by the way, if anybody had a small family drum with someone else. <laughs> and then everybody should eat a proportional of the size of the number of the people you brought. Maybe something that we should do in memory of Jesus is invite someone to worship on Sunday, Easter Sunday, or invite them to your house for dinner. Do this in memory of me. There's another thing we do. We know about that Eucharistic words of Jesus. To do this in memory of me. As he shares right at once. We're also mindful of as we do this in memory, it changes us. As the stories become alive. So are we willing to be changed by the word of God and the ritual action that we participate in? As you know, um, this Mark, Matthew, Luke, and Paul all have an institution narrative as part of their university story. John does not. Some speculate after 50 years, John was figuring, you know that part? Let me tell you another dimension of breaking open the Eucharist. And so, in the context of the Eucharist, for John, he has Jesus wash the feet of the disciples. We all know the dynamic of that story. But maybe at the end, the author simply should have said, Do this in memory of you. This evening, we have the opportunity to begin doing things in memory of Jesus. Tonight is the opportunity to wash feet and to have your feet washed. So again, the rituals of our church, the actions of our church, invite us to remember what Jesus asked us to do. One word about foot washing. I don't know about you, but my sense is feet are probably the most things we're self-conscious about, for all most of us. Now some of you ladies get nice pet shoes, I don't know about that. But <laughs> and they're probably a bundle part for a number of people. Who's ticklish in your feet? <laughs> yeah, go right for the bundle. We're so self-conscious in some ways, at least it's the last thing we even wash when we take a shower or a bath. How many wash their feet first? No. <laughs> Last. <laughs> so maybe the dynamic of the story is the feet represent that which is most vulnerable about ourselves, that which we're most self-conscious about. And yet the gospel invitation is to be where we allow ourselves to have our feet washed and to wash others. My sense it takes a lot more courage have your feet washed than it is to wash someone else's feet. When your feet are washed, you are vulnerable and you're not in control. That was Peter's issue. I want to be in control. That's why I want you to wash your feet. I'll be glad to do it for anyone else. So, the opportunity to come forward in a few moments in our stations throughout the church is an invitation to do this in memory of me. Do what Jesus commanded. Wash feet. Love one another as I have loved you.